The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! To views from the sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill. And college football season is officially over. The national championship game has occurred. Georgia, the Bulldogs, are the back to back national champion. And maybe, maybe Alabama's reign of terror is over. But we'll see. Um, well, Georgia's reign of terror has begun. So now you have a yeah, new team true. to hate another, very soon. Yeah, another SEC team to just love and enjoy for the rest of my life. Um, really, there's not much to talk, talk about for the national championship game. Unfortunately, does dom- domination does that even describe what? No, we, what most people saw for about a half, and then yeah. gave up or went to sleep to get ready for work the next day. Yeah, Georgia, they set a record right for points. It was the biggest blowout in national championship <sighs> history. Biggest they, blowout. I stopped watching halfway through the third when it was like, I think it was like 45 to 7 or 48, something yeah. like that. That's when I stopped. So, yeah, I was surprised when I saw 65 when I woke up and TCU didn't score another point. Yeah, I, as I told you, like I got home from work kind of late. And when I turned on the TV, it was at halftime, 38 to 7. And I said, no, I'm not watching this. <laughs> and I just didn't. Um, and then to come to find out that they be- basically kept going with that score and yeah, it was unfortunate. I was a big believer in Max Duggan. I liked his play. Um, I thought he was pretty gritty. He's I thought t- gritty and scrappy. Yeah, yeah. I thought TCU had a chance. Um, I mean, Quentin Johnston had one catch for three yards. So. They had 180 yards total of offense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and once again, we're going to see a ton of these Georgia players, especially on the defensive side. In the upcoming draft, early on, and guess what? What did you did you watch any highlights of the game? A uh, little. So there's a defensive tackle that played most of the game mm-hmm. named Bear Alexander. Oh yeah, six five three oh five. Uh, he's a true freshman, hmm. and besides Jalen Carter, he probably dominated the most. Yeah, on the defense. So he's getting hype. His nickname is Bear. He's a true freshman. And he's coming back, along with about seven or eight players that play key roles yeah. on Georgia's defense that are freshmen and sophomores. Mm-hmm. So get ready, America. Yeah. Are you ready for the next two to three, maybe four years I mean, of just rolling over and over and over? Four or five <laughs> Georgia defensive players getting drafted first round? Yeah. It's wild because like, you think of last year, and you thought that was a lot of players, and like they just refueled. Yeah. And that's where it starts to feel like Alabama. So that that is scary. That's um, why I said I, I hope you're prepared for this for Georgia to be Alabama. Yeah. Because you said Alabama's gone. Are they? <laughs> yeah. Are they? Yeah. They're just repackaged. Mm-hmm. And the 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 era of Stetson Bennett is over, which is sad. Listen, man. <laughs> the, his respect has been earned to, past what his disrespect used to be. Yeah. He is a Georgia legend. People, I think people still will fight the fact that he is one of the best college quarterbacks of maybe the past decade. Mm-hmm. How can you argue it at this point? Yeah, and he, it, he looked really good yeah. in his final game. Like you can't call him a game manager. Like he he was shaking defenders out of their shoes in the SEC. Yeah, he's hitting passes accurately. Yeah, he can't throw it sixty yards downfield, but when he needs to hit a deep ball, he puts it right where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Complete command of the team. What else do you want? Yeah. What and the else? game before, he kind of sort of outdueled C.J. Stroud. So, yeah. like, when it was time to make a play, he did it. Yeah. Um. So, with that, I mean, there's not much, like we said, not much to talk about. Unfortunately, it was a blowout. Yeah, in terms um, of the game, not much. But college football is over. 
So um, it's starting to turn into uh, Malik's favorite time of the year, recruiting season. Um, the My off favorite season. time of year. <laughs> um, you might be right. I haven't even thought about that fact. But yes, I pay attention to the transfer portal every day. Yeah, because uh, I am a sicko. <laughs> but That's um, true. yeah. So we get to take a break off of college football, um, which is nice for me, I guess. I. <laughs> It takes a lot for me to get into college football sometimes. At least some Listen, of the it was a quality season, really good semifinals. Yeah, the bowl games, like I said, were some of the best I feel like we've seen in a while. Yeah. Quick question before we we move on. There's a lot of ridiculous talk in my opinion about this that national championship result hurting college football. And people arguing that it's supposed to be the four best teams and not the four most deserving teams. Yeah. That sounds ridiculous all around to me. How does it sound to you? What's your opinion on those I thoughts? I mean, well, what do you want to do about it? I, like, that's always my question to people. Do you think, I mean, one of the most watched events, one of the most hyped events in sports um, every year is March Madness. Yeah. Do you think that's the most fair way to go about it? <laughs> like, the stinking Peacocks made it to the Elite Eight last year. What, what are we Everybody talk- was happy about it. Right. And excited. What are we talking about? Um, things like that are going to happen. TCU looked really good going into the national championship game. Some people thought TCU had a chance to win. They they were the miracle team that everybody had jumped on. Right. Um, and they fell, fell flat in the big game. That's going to happen. Um, like I've said multiple times, we've seen... Blowouts in the Super Bowl. We've seen blowouts in NBA. We finals. all watched the Seahawks tear apart the Broncos. Right. <laughs> so we like, all watched it. You always take that chance. And who knows if you replace TCU with an Alabama that everybody loves so much. Give us more <laughs> Alabama. Yeah. Um, who says they're going to even play any better? We've seen Alabama fall flat on them. They lost to LSU. <sighs> yeah, they who lost. Who got smacked by Georgia in the SEC championship. Yeah. And they almost lost to the Longhorns of yeah. Texas. Yeah. They had two losses on the season. I don't know what you want me to tell you. They lost two games. You're not supposed to lose but, two games and make yeah, it to the Yeah, the argument was they were more deserving. <laughs> no, not that they were better than TCU. Yeah. Because SEC, I guess, and Bryce Young, a few good players and Nick Saban, that's why. Yeah. But, oh, when TCU beats Michigan, oh, oh yeah, TCU, they're, they're real deal. Beat a team that they thought – should have been in the national championship. Everybody thought Michigan was going to roll over TCU. Didn't happen. TCU hype happens. Then TCU, you know, they finally hit the wall and they get blown out by Georgia. Now people want to complain. I don't get it. It happens. Yes, it stinks. It's unfortunate. But who knows? Next year could be a super exciting game. Or somebody could get blown out again. I don't, you never know. Before the BCS era, these things happened. During the BCS era, these things happened, and this will continue to happen in the playoff era. Yeah. Even more as expansion happens, most likely. Because mm-hmm. what do you think is going to happen when 12 versus 1 happens? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's, that, that probably won't be pretty. Right. And you're not, I don't know, you're just not ever going to, you're not always going to get, like, these crazy, like, I think about the Super Bowl a lot. Like, people are like, oh, yeah, we need... If only it was like Kansas City versus Buffalo every game or whatever in the AFC Championship last year or the previous game, whatever. Yeah, games like that are um, rare. But like, there's a reason why that was like get, a time that was a classic. Yeah, you're like, wow, why couldn't that be the Super Bowl? Well, because both teams play in the AFC. Like, some people just <laughs> complain to complain. I guess I, I don't know. Yeah, I hope people are ready for Georgia versus North Carolina or Louisville. Mm-hmm. That's gonna that's gonna be like a, an eleven or twelve seed in the next in two years, two or three yeah. years when they expand to twelve. I hope people get excited for that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, you yeah. just can't draw up the perfect matchup every year. It's just not gonna happen. Um, and even if it does happen, you're not always gonna get the outcome that you want. Um, that's just it's just not how things work. I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Also, just, Tennessee got smacked by South Carolina. They couldn't get in. Yeah. Hmm. So, I don't know. Complain all you want, I guess, but it's going to happen at some point. It was a fun season. Right. Yeah. Just, and as a Michigan fan, the positives were high. 
the low sucked, but the positives were high. Yeah. And as a Michigan State fan, we just don't even back to the drawing board. We don't even acknowledge <laughs> the season. So yeah, back to the drawing board. That's that's the best part. You you should be paying attention to recruiting and transfer portal because <laughs> they're they're doing pretty good. Yeah, good recruiting class coming in. Got some some more transfer transfer guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Right, but for now, we get to take a little bit of time and not talk about college football just just for a little bit. Um, all right. So last week we skipped out on college basketball. We're in a conference play. We are starting to head down to downhill towards that March Madness that I was talking about. My personal favorite time of the year um so we've gotten into um conference play as i said and things have changed and not changed um i do believe that we even we might not have even mentioned no we didn't mention it i know we didn't because we talked about it after the show yeah purdue got beat by Rutgers. second year in a row be, being ranked number one. The second year in a row Rutgers. that Rutgers has knocked off Purdue at number one. And I believe it's only Rutgers' second time ever knocking off a number one seed. Yeah. And so now both of those times in their school's history was Purdue, which is pretty funny. Um, So they beat Purdue by one, which is wild. Again, why you cannot take the Big, Big Ten easily. Um, And then Purdue went on and beat Ohio State by two in the next game, so they had another close one. And then they beat Penn State by 13. Uh, Purdue is still in the third spot, but they have been, quote-unquote, re-leapfrogged, I guess, by Houston. Houston is back up to number one um, after their conferences uh, began back up. They beat SMU handily. They beat Cincinnati handily. Um, yeah, they're they're going to most likely walk. They might get upset by one team because that's – that's naturally yeah. what happens with these types of teams and these conferences. Right. They have a couple interesting games. They will play Tulane uh, next week, I believe. Yeah. Every time they play Memphis, it's kind of close. Yeah. And so, then yeah. Uh, UCF is 12-4. and four. They play them towards the end of the month. That should be a pretty good game. So there's a chance there. Um, Kansas also back up. They're number two now. And they beat Texas Tech, West Virginia, and Oklahoma. All fairly close games, but Big 12 is – Really tough. They're about to. Yeah. They're about to take on Iowa State this week. Right now, they're maybe the best all around conference. Yeah, the, like look at their schedule: uh, Iowa State, Kansas State, TCU, Baylor, Kentucky, Kansas State again, and that's all in January. Yeah. <laughs> so Big Twelve is it's a gauntlet. Yeah, with three of those teams being ranked, um, and then like teams like Baylor and Kentucky who are sitting just outside of uh. Um, it's pretty wild. Uh, then we got Purdue. Alabama is still there at four. Um, Tennessee is now at five. One of the other ones that we were watching for a while, UConn has lost two games now uh, since the last time that we talked about college basketball. They lost to Xavier, 83-73, to and then they lost to uh, Providence, 73-61. to So they've fallen down a little bit. Uh, UCLA is sitting at seven. Uh, Gonzaga is at eight. Arizona's fallen down a little bit. They're at nine. Texas is at ten. Kansas State is the team that's been uh, blowing up because they beat Texas. Um, they beat Texas, and then they went on the road and beat Baylor. And the wild part is they put up 116 points, and that was in regulation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was Texas one, had 102 also. Yeah, it was one, NBA score. It was pretty wild. Um, cool to watch though. And Kansas State, again, being Big 12, they're going to go through a gauntlet, so we'll have to see how they come out yeah, of that. They they just beat Oklahoma State at home last night, so they're still on a good roll. Yep. Uh, Xavier's up to 12 now. Uh, Virginia sitting at 13. Iowa State at 14. Arkansas, Miami, TCU, Wisconsin, Providence, Missouri. Auburn. And then we got Charleston. Love when those mid-majors jump in there. Yep. Charleston sitting at 22. 16-1. Not uh, a strong schedule, but they're just playing great basketball where they are. Right. Um, what conference are they in? The Colonial. Yeah. Which I will say the Colonial has been improving. We've seen 
some of these teams make the tournament in the last few years. UNC Wilmington, who they play tonight, should be a really good game, yeah. actually, for that conference. Uh, we've seen them in the tournament before. Um, Monmouth, wow. 1-15. in 15. Did they make the tournament last year, or was that a couple years ago? Monmouth? Yeah. I don't remember them making it. I feel like they They might it. have. Um, it might have been a couple years ago, then, if they're 1-15, in 15, but... <laughs> Still, that's uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Then we got Malik's uh, San Diego State. Let's go, Aztecs. Um, and then Duke and Marquette rounding out um, the top 25. And Duke got blown out by NC State. Yeah, they're they're in a bit of a rough patch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I want to make a few points all around in terms of college basketball since it's been a minute. Yeah, and then so and then when we're done, we'll get to the Big Ten. Yeah, um, right after that. So at this point. I believe that every predicted winner of their conferences in the the big power conferences are all struggling at the moment. Mm -hmm. So as you look through, North Carolina, preseason number one, predicted to win the ACC. Unranked. Unranked, coming off of a loss to Virginia. Mm -hmm. You go to the Big Ten. The top two predicted were Illinois and Indiana. Right now, Illinois, coming off of a win at Nebraska, kind of a yeah game they needed to just get their confidence back. Mm -hmm. They were zero and three in conference. Now they're two and three, and Illinois is eleven and five overall. So they're kind of getting it back together. Yeah, but Indiana, one and three in conference, ten and five overall. Yeah, lost to Northwestern at home. Mm -hmm. Gave up a twenty-one point lead to Iowa that they had at the half. Yeah. Yes, and that is with Patrick McCaffrey, Fran McCaffrey's son, mm -hmm. sitting out because of uh, mental things he's dealing with. Right. So, yeah, they just let everybody else on Iowa just go off, mm -hmm. including Chris Murray, who's still just balling. He gave them 30 and 10. So, yeah, those two teams are disappointing right now. Uh, Big 12, Kansas State was predicted to finish last in conference. Right now, they are undefeated, 4-0 in conference, mm -hmm. and 15-1 and overall. They yeah. went from unranked to ranked 11th in a week. Incredible story with them. Mm -hmm. If people aren't paying attention, they need to with Kansas State because their two best players right now, Keontae Johnson, who two years ago was a preseason SEC Player of the Year pick, mm -hmm. started the season at Florida and collapsed during one of their first games out of nowhere. Had to be out for the rest of the season. Didn't know if he played basketball again. Transfers to Kansas State with new head coach Jerome Tang, who was at Baylor. And right now he is averaging 18, 7, and 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shooting the lights out. He's better than, than he was at Florida. So it's a great story with Keontae Johnson. Yeah. And then another underdog story, Marquise Noel. A guy who was in, do you remember Jelly Fam? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Marquise Noel. And Jordan Walker are the last two known people in college basketball. 5'8", 160 out of Harlem, New York. And he's been balling lately. He's been putting up numbers. Past three games, he's averaging like 35 a game. Yeah. He put up, I believe, like 39 against Texas, 35 against Baylor. He's averaging 17, 3, and 9 assists right now. Mm -hmm. Them two, they're, they've become a top three backcourt in college basketball without anybody seeing it coming. Yeah. And they're just dominating. Mm -hmm. Like, when they play off of each other so well, and nobody can really guard them right now. Like, Marquise Noel is shifty. He hits, like, deep logo threes. Keontae Johnson is a, like, major big-time athlete. He's got skill on offense. So, yeah, they're they're on a super hot streak. Yeah. Shouts out to Kansas State for getting that done. And one quick thing that I'll say, too, and this is, like, an early preview to, you know, our tournament, tournament bracket episode. Yeah. Kansas State – have the pieces that I always say are really good for a team. They have good guard. They have good guards. They have senior leadership, and they can hit free throws. Yeah, and they're good. They're just a good shooting team in general. Like they can yeah. put up a when, lot of when points. they get hot. They are. They've shown so far right. that they're close to impossible to stop when they get hot. Yeah. So even if they lose a little bit, because the Big Twelve is tough, if they're hot at the right time, they could do something. Yeah. But, yeah, moving on to the Big East, predicted preseason top 10 team and conference winner Creighton. Three and two in conference, nine and seven overall. Mm -hmm. Middle of the pack. Getting, having a hard time figuring things out. 
Yep. I think Providence was predicted top six, mm-hmm. but nobody had them playing as well as they are right now. Six and zero in conference, fourteen and three overall. If you haven't heard of Bryce Hopkins, look up some highlights on YouTube. Yeah, he was at Kentucky for two years. Calipari played him six minutes a game last year. He averaged three points a game. Mm-hmm. Right now, Bryce Hopkins is averaging sixteen, nine and two. And he is, he's six five, and he's like two twenty something. Yep. Like he has game, and he's big. And sucks for Kentucky. We'll get to Kentucky. Yeah. Cal let him walk, and he would probably be their best player right now. Yeah. And don't forget for Kentucky. Don't forget this Providence team made a little bit of a splash last year. Yeah. Um, in the tournament, so yeah. nobody knew if they could replicate it, and they're doing it. Yeah, and they they've been there. So another team, just kind of watch out. They're ten and zero at home. Yeah, I will say that they're they're just playing out of control right now. UConn is still one of the best teams in the country, but they're fourth in the Big East right now. Mm-hmm. So top of Marquette is five and one in conference right now. Shaka Smart, I figured he'd be a better fit at Marquette than he was at Texas. Yeah, and he's showing it right now. And Xavier is five and zero right now and thirteen and three in conference. Mm-hmm. They're playing really well. They have a big man combo of. Let me see. I have to remember their names. Uh, Zach Fremantle and Jack Nungy. Mm-hmm. They are both averaging. Well, Zach Fremantle is averaging 15 and 8, and Jack Nungy is averaging 14 and 7. Mm-hmm. Two big men averaging around those numbers at the same time. Yeah. That's rare. How often do you see that? And Fremantle's coming off of a 20, 29 and uh, 11 game. Yeah. They, they figured out a way to have both of their big men flourish at the exact same time and it's working out really well for them the other thing i'll say too real quick is Fremantle can hit threes too yeah um so can jack nungy yeah yeah i think one conference that's kind of going as predicted so far is the pac-12 i mean utah is playing much better than anybody could have predicted mm-hmm. and arizona state is pretty good right now but arizona i still think they're a final four contender but they're three and two in conference right now mm-hmm. still a top 10 team UCLA is playing their butts off. They look even better than they did last year. Yeah. They're they're playing really well. Jaime Hawkins is an All-American candidate. Jalen Clark is playing great. Tiger Campbell has been in college basketball for 10 years now, <laughs> it seems like. Yeah. Yeah, they're just playing great basketball. And before we get to the Big Ten, the SEC. Right now at the top, you have Tennessee and Alabama. They're ranked fifth and fourth. I can't wait to see them play. Tennessee has just been going about it like an NBA team, like business. Mm -hmm. And Alabama's been getting better every game. Right now, Alabama has the best freshman in the country, in my opinion. Brandon Miller, Mm -hmm. a guy who the Detroit Pistons should look at with their most likely top three pick. He's averaging 19 and 8 on very efficient numbers. Like, he... He's not a great scorer in the paint right now because he's kind of skinny. But mid-range and three-pointer, he can give you anything you want. He's got every move in the bag. Yeah. And the team around him is balling, too. Alabama's playing really well. Missouri has been a big surprise. Mm -hmm. They blew out Kentucky at home, blew out Illinois. They lost to Arkansas recently. I don't know if they're losing steam, but they're off to their best start in some years. Mm -hmm. Arkansas is rebounding off of some injuries. Two of their best four players are out for the season, maybe. Right. But they still have some talent, so they're figuring things out. But we need to get to those Wildcats in Lexington, Kentucky. They're one and three in conference. Mm -hmm. Ten and six overall. They were the predicted number one in this conference, and they're in the bottom three. They got blown out by Alabama. Blown out by Alabama. Lost to South Carolina. Almost lost to Michigan overseas. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, they just – Took one of their most embarrassing losses in a few years. Losing to a South Carolina team that has isn't even close to figuring out what kind of team they are. Mm-hmm. They have a brand new coach that's, yeah, same as the team, just figuring it out. And Gigi Jackson, who's a reclassified five-star freshman. The guy has a lot of talent, but he's very young, their best player. Yeah. And they let South Carolina come in and score 71. Yeah. South Carolina scored 42 in their game before they played Kentucky. 
Yeah. Something is off. And Kentucky <laughs> fans aren't happy. They are going crazy right now on John Calipari. Calling yeah. for firings, calling for firing of the AD. Some of it is a bit too much, but when you realize Kentucky hasn't made a Final Four run since 2016, I believe, 15 mm-hmm. or 16, the COVID season with Brandon Boston, they went 9-16. and 16. Last year, they lose to St. Peter's, and now this. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Um, do, you, do you think Cal should be on the hot seat? Because not not having – Kentucky is a championship program. Mm -hmm. It's about maintaining excellence. Yeah. Right now, it's just a program where Cal gets a lot of NBA kids and ships them off. And he's honestly told people that that's his most important thing. He wants to get kids to the league. Seems like winning championships has gone to the wayside. Mm -hmm. And Kentucky fans can't handle that. Right. Um. Yeah, I guess at the end of the day, I mean, you would have to be. Um, the biggest thing, like for me, Oscar Shibwe is obviously a monster. He's um, the one thing keeping them like afloat in yeah, most games. I, I think the biggest disappointment, and this could be, this is why I, th- I think maybe because it could be coaching. What is up with Casey Wallace? He's he's not a he's not a problem, but he's been inconsistent. I mean, let me. I got honestly because I I think as as a shooter and a defender. Maybe expectations on him were higher. Like from what I've seen from him so far, I'm not disappointed in him. So because he's not like a high level bucket getter, and it's it's a problem that Cal doesn't have one. Right. That's the disappointment. But he's a really good defender. He's a really good shooter so far. He's shooting like forty percent from three. Mm-hmm. Like he's doing his job. Who else is supposed? There's supposed to be other pieces, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I just think I guess I know he's a freshman, but like. He's a five-star freshman, he, I understand. Right, that he part. was supposed to be that guy. And, again, it could be freshman things, could be coaching things. Um, but there was a stretch um, beginning of this month, well, December. He had a game with seven points. Uh, he was one of seven from the three. Uh, then he had a game with 27, 19, 17, 14. Good stretch there, yeah. playing 30 minutes a game. The last two games against Alabama when they got blown out, he played 23 minutes. He was 1 of 13, 0 of 6, 2 points, 3 assists. He only had one turnover, so that's good. Um, And then the loss to South Carolina, I don't know, did he get hurt or something? He played 8 minutes and had 4 points. Hmm. Um, And I've seen that here and there where he's had some games where, like, he played 30. eh, Okay, I won't count that one. Um, It's against, like, a small school where he played 30 minutes, but he only had three points against a small school. Um, so just little things like that. I feel like now, maybe I, he needs the consistency, but it could be a coaching thing. I don't know. It, a lot of it is coaching. Cause I think Kyle's gotten worse as, as a coach over the years, Yeah, but you knew what Casey Wallace was coming into this season. Mm-hmm. Maybe you hoped he like added more creativity to his game, but you know, he's mainly a guy that, he can get easy buckets in the lane because he's strong and athletic. Yeah. He can hit open threes. He's not like an off-the-dribble three-point shooter. He's a catch-and-shoot guy, and he's a defender, an energy guy. Though That is what you expect from him. If you get 27, 17, 14, if you get that stretch from him, that's great. Yeah. Severe Wheeler, not a scorer. Mm-hmm. Jacob Toppin, they're making him be more of a scorer, but he's really not one. Right. And that he's he's not a guy that – like spreads teams out. Like the problem is right now with Oscar Shibwe and Jacob Toppin, like they're pretty paint oriented yeah. and they bring shooters off the bench, yeah. but they're just shooters. Yeah. And Tony Reeves is a high level three point shooter. Yeah. But he's not like a scorer. And exactly. I, I think that's more of my case of like, and it's no fault of his own that maybe just, it needs to be case and Wallace be that guy. And it's asking a lot. I can understand that point. It's yeah. asking a lot, but like if you have a guy like Oscar Shibwe, you would think you could get those shooters open and knock down shots. And then speaking, of, sorry to interrupt. You. Speaking no, of good. Oscar Shibwe, he had a horrible game against Alabama. Mm-hmm. He had maybe his worst game of his career. Yeah. So they're just they're kind of all over the place right now. I would I would say. Um, 
Well, yeah, they're they're disappointing, but I I could care less about Kentucky. I'll be honest. You you know the yeah. way that I react to these. I kind also of teams. think it would be funny if they missed the tournament. So, but yeah, seeing it from the Kentucky side, it's red flags everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you wanted to get to the Big Ten. Did we mention the ACC? Did I mention that? Yeah, I mentioned North Carolina being a disappointment. All right. That's um, the main thing I mentioned. The only other thing I was going to kind of say is Duke, talking about Duke. Yeah, they're, without Coach K, they're really figuring out their identity as a program right now. Right. Because yeah, a lot of their freshmen are having the major ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Filipowski could be fun to watch, though. Hey, he's future. he's good, but he, he's he's had some dro- a little bit of a drop-off. Yeah. Dariq Whitehead is supposed to be, like, the guy, and he's still, like, trying to get into a rhythm. Yeah. Um, and then uh, – Kind of quietly, uh, Virginia and Miami are around. Oh, yeah. Um, Miami did lose to Georgia Tech, I guess. That's a tough loss. Didn't see that. Um, but Virginia's kind of doing it like. They're doing it the Virginia like, way, honestly. Like old school Virginia, to be honest, even. There's nothing that pops out when you see. Yeah. Because yeah. there was a time, you know, with like. Would you want to go back to Malcolm Brogdon? No, I don't know. <laughs> Because, honestly, for us, that's like – Virginia wasn't good when we were kids. Cause they weren't more, very good. They had a few, like, solid seasons. Like, when they were when they won the national championship a few years ago, it was more of like a 3 and D kind of team. Yeah. Now it's kind of like a – They still kind of are, but they they don't have elite shooters. Not as much shooters. three. Yeah, yeah, not as much They three. don't have elite shooters. Right. And they don't have, like, elite defenders. They have, like, pretty good to really good of both. Yeah. And, so Ke- and Kihei Clark is, like, the fearless leader. Yeah. Speaking of Kia Clark, he was on that national championship team. <laughs> That's how long it's been. Yeah. All his teammates are in the league. All right, let's get into the Big Ten then. Um, so obviously, like we always say, Big Ten is crazy. Purdue is four and one in the conference. No surprise there, fifteen and one. Michigan State, four and one in the conference, twelve and four. Northwestern. I I love this rarely happens. We they made the tournament in twenty, was it sixteen? 17? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But I, I love when Northwestern and teams like this just – I hope they can continue it somehow. And it's not like they're beating bottom of the barrel. They beat Michigan State. We kind of talked about it back in December. Yeah. They beat uh, Illinois and Indiana. That Indiana win, is that's the one that got my attention. Yeah. And now they're going to play Michigan this weekend. That should be interesting. So, is Northwestern that, yeah. is 12-3. and three. Twelve and three, four and one, in, well, three and one in conference. Um, then they, we got, yeah, yeah. Then we got Michigan. They're nine and six on the season, but they are three and one in the division. So there's hope there yeah. that they're gonna start picking it up. They, they play at Iowa tomorrow mm-hmm. at seven. If they win that game, that would be really. Iowa's starting to get on a roll again. Yeah. So they kind of need that one. Wisconsin three and two, Rutgers three and two, Ohio State two and two, Penn State two and three. This is classic Big Ten. Everybody yeah. kind of right in the middle. Um, and yeah, um, obviously Purdue has been really good, really good. Um, but Michigan state and Michigan will give some updates on them. They did have, uh, their game at the Breslin Michigan state won that game 59 to 53. Pretty, pretty ugly game for the most part. Uh, Michigan shot 15% from the three point line. So that was fun. Um, Hunter Dickinson once again came up small. Yep. In a big game. Mm-hmm. He played good, but... He, he had decent numbers. You need more from him. Exactly. And that's kind of what we've been saying. Um, yeah, Doug McDaniel wasn't ready yeah. for that type of game. Yeah, And uh, the Jets still working through some things, I feel like. Um, finding his rhythm. He, uh, he started off crazy hot, and now he's... Yeah. Yeah. Trying to find some consistency. And then, I've said it before, too, like, Kobe Bufkin keeps showing... Little signs here and there, like that dunk in the game was pretty sick. Um, but yeah, he hasn't had one of those games, but he was pretty inefficient in this one. Um, Everybody was inefficient for the most part, true. Yeah, true. Joey Baker was 0 for 3 from 3. Yeah, they they just couldn't get a rhythm going, mm-hmm. and I blame most of it as I have for the for this entire season so far on Juwan Howard. <laughs> His coaching in that game just yeah. didn't make sense. Like, there were times where he should have called timeouts, where MSU was gaining huge momentum where he didn't. There were times where he had lineups in there that didn't make much sense. And he doesn't draw anything up for Joey Baker. 
Yeah. Like he's he's mostly taking contested threes. Mm-hmm. He never gets something open. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 odd. I, yeah. Hey, we're he hoping. coaches them too much like they're an NBA team or something. Yeah. We're we're hoping they can figure it out. Um and then on the Michigan State side, Joey Hauser was super inefficient, but he ended up with seven points, ten rebounds. He got a lot of hustle points in the game, to be honest. Um and then Maddie Sissoko got beat up again. Um, I don't. He's just a disappointment to me, to be honest. Uh, he, he he never. I don't. I don't know what his ceiling was supposed to be. Yeah. To be hundred percent honest. Yeah. When he came to Michigan State with like the recruiting, I, it was all. He was one of those guys. This is kind of a weird comparison, but like Caleb Houston, where the the recruiting ranking was all projection. Mm-hmm. Like Caleb Caleb Houston was nothing close. To being like a high level scorer, or but he he was six eight, yeah. And he showed signs of being a great shooter, mm-hmm. and he showed it like five times at Michigan. <laughs> yeah, Matty Sissoko was all projection because of size and athleticism. Right, he's had a few good games, but yeah, yep. Um, it's nice to see Michigan State healthy again. Like Jade Nakins is back, Malik Hall is healthy. Um, my guy AJ Hoggard carried the team, kind of. Your guy. I hate wait, him. wait a minute. What? I was kidding. That was supposed to be sarcasm. Um, he had 15 points, six assists, four rebounds. Like I said, he's a solid player. He's, he's not, a good college point guard. He's just not for me. Uh, Tyson Walker had a pretty decent game, 14 points. And then, again, Malik Hall, 15 um, off the bench. Which yeah. have, Having him back is, yeah, he's the right. key. And they got no other points off their bench. So that ugly. has to change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So ugly game. Um, but I mean, that's, that's kind of how the big 10 goes. Um, then Michigan state beat Wisconsin 69 to 65. Um, that game was a little better. Joey Hauser had 20 points in that game. Um, when he's on, he gets going. Um, but again, in this game, Malik Hall, only person off the bench to score eight points. Did get 12 out of Jaden Akins. Hoggard had 10. Tyson Walker had 13. So they're getting that consistency that we have been expecting, that a lot of their starters are going to be able to score. Um, so, yeah. And now they have Illinois on Friday. And then next week, they got Purdue. So that'll be yeah. another big statement game. They got Rutgers. They got Indiana. I'm, I'm really excited to see the backcourt matchup. Those are two freshmen for Purdue, mm-hmm. and they're playing like seniors. Yeah. And then they're going to play Purdue again at the end of the month. So mm-hmm. Michigan State, again, they're in the gauntlet for the Big Ten. Um, like we said, Michigan, they're going to play Iowa tomorrow. That'll be a good bounce-back game for them if they can get it done. Then they got to play Northwestern, then Maryland, Minnesota, so they play some of the bottom of the barrel. So if they can get past Northwestern, they get a little bit of a breather before they get Purdue at the end of the month. Ever since Michigan completely smacked them, they've they've won a few games. They're trying to get their confidence back. So yeah, yeah. Maryland, I don't expect them to be as bad when Michigan plays them at Maryland. Right. Again, it's the Big Ten. You can't take any of these teams lightly, but that's hopefully where they can get themselves back on track. Only get beat down by Purdue. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, never know. That Hunter Dickinson Zach Eady matchup will be fun to watch. Oh my gosh, that will be good. Zach Eady is going to eat him alive. I'm predicting it now. <laughs> Zach Eady has had a few thirty and thirteen games, like big. He's going for at least twenty five and twelve, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you. Yeah, that old Hunter's going to have problems with Zach Eady. That might hurt Hunter's draft stock. To be honest, <laughs> does, does he have a draft stock? I think he still does. I, it's <sighs> definitely I not know. where it was last year. Um, he he has lost some of. I, I don't know. Yeah, there's something missing. There's some inconsistent fire cuz against Maryland, the team that didn't recruit him from his hometown, 30 and 12 against them. Yeah. But you play Michigan State at Breslin, you score one basket and try to hype up the crowd and then you disappear. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. Um uh, any last minute things to talk about for college basketball they want to bring up before we move on? Um Let me see. I don't uh, I've watched a lot of games. I don't know if there's a specific team. Let me check the top 25 one more time. If you have the chance to watch TCU, watch them. Mm -hmm. Mike Miles might be my favorite college point guard. He had 30 against Baylor. 
he's an absolute bucket and will be a steal in the NBA draft. Hmm. Mike Miles and TCU. They just got upset by Iowa State, but they're still good. Yeah. Can TCU make it to two championship appearances? Check out they our can. March Madness bracket. They can. It's possible. Um, all right. I'm going to make the executive decision to skip the NBA. We are debating about nothing, talking. Nothing major, major outside of a few injury updates. Yeah, we're getting closer to the all-star break, so yeah. we will be able to talk about some of that stuff um, coming up. Um, but really, we got through all the big news um, last week. Not too much going on. There's actually a lot of injuries, which is kind of unfortunate at the moment. Brooklyn is still balling, 9-1 and one in their last 10. And they're without Kevin Durant for about two weeks now. The Pacers are 8-2 and two in their last 10. Yeah, they've been playing good. Tyrese Halliburton has been going crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to move on to the NFL um, because we're in the playoffs. It's crazy. 18 weeks are over. We're in the NFL playoffs. Um, so first we'll recap these uh, week 18 picks. Malik, you were ahead by three picks with a crazy comeback last week. And I had a lot of ground to make up. And week 18 was a good week for you. Okay. You got 12 correct picks, Malik. And I got seven. Don't get cocky. Don't get cocky. It, I'm not, I'm not going was overboard. Quite the collapse. I Listen, will say. I, I remember you making some questionable decisions to try and like get a Taymaker punch. Yeah. There was and I couple, wasn't saying anything. Yeah. There was a couple of times where I tried to, you know, make it, make it close. Cause I had a pretty good lead at one point. Um, and I squandered it all. What were some of the ones that kind of like hurt you right now? They can like some pain. Um, did you pick the Texans or the Colts? I can't remember who I picked. So I this, did, I, I picked the Texans. This week, of course, was wild because there was a lot of close games. I had Tennessee over Jacksonville. Oh, we know okay. how that game ended. Uh, Josh Dobbs, you blew it. Um, Tampa Bay and Atlanta. I had Tampa Bay. I picked the Falcons. Yeah, I guess I didn't. Um. Because that was early in the week, I didn't know that Tampa Bay was going to bench everybody. Either way, I, I think Tampa Bay was still an okay choice. Um, I did pick the Colts. Um, that game. <laughs> that game was something else. That was the, That might be the silliest game in NFL history. Yeah. By kinda, far. Kind of fun from an entertainment standpoint, but uh, another game that I lost in, you know, the waning hours of the game. I think that, that should be known as Lovey Smith's middle finger, too. The Colts, I mean the Texans organization. Yeah, that's a, that's what it should be known as. Um, I had the Jets over the Dolphins, another game that was squandered in the waning seconds. Um, I got Carolina over New Orleans, correct? I picked Cleveland. I thought they would show up, but you know the Steelers they they tried their darndest to get into the playoffs. Um, and then I had the Giants over Philadelphia. Um, I think at that time we didn't know if. Jalen Hurts was going to play or not, and I had to just kind of go for it. Giants sat everybody. Davis Webb tried his hardest. Yeah. That touchdown run was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was just bad overall. Kenny Galladay got his first receiving touchdown yeah. of the season. Let's give a round of applause yeah. to the invisible man. Going Kenny into that Kenny final game, for his contract uh, incentive, he needed 76 catches. <laughs> In the final game. <laughs> I was just about to say, how much do you think he gets for that one catch in the last game? <laughs> just no. a pat on the back from his yeah. agent? Good job, Kenny. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you, you tried sometimes. So Malik finished the season off with 152 correct picks, and I had 144. Back-to-back back back chips. Yeah, Back-to-back -back chips. Rough, uh, rough ending for me. Listen, a three-peat, it's, it's rare for a three-peat. Your chances next season are incredibly high. Yeah. I'm not Georgia, Joey. Might have to go with the boring, <laughs> safe route. Next I'm not year. Georgia. We'll Th see. Listen, that that was that was my take after the first few weeks. Um I was doing too much. Really, really quickly, because I want to talk about the Lions and some of the playoff implications. But there were some coaches fired. Um, there are some things going around. Um Lovey Smith was fired. R.I.P. Lovey. From the Texans. A lot of people are mad at that. And I, I get the reasoning behind it because, you know, they're a rebuilding team. It's a little weird to hire two coaches and go through them both in one season stints. 
I don't think Lovey was the guy. I don't think Lovey was the guy either. <laughs> I, I I fully believe Lovey. They're they're they had a response to the them firing David Cully mm-hmm. and went full in with the diversity hire yeah. and said, "Look, we're bringing back Lovey Smith," mm-hmm. and that's all it was. Yeah, it's still nonsense though. Yeah, it, it's a it's another year of nonsense. It's weird. Um, like David Cully got the best out of that team he could last year. Yeah, and they fired him. And now a lot of teams, um, the teams that have interim coaches like the Colts, um, the Panthers, and I'm trying to think of what the other team was. I think the Texans did. Um, have all interviewed or set up interviews with Ben Johnson, offensive coordinator yeah. for the Lions. That's a little As bit expected. Spooky. Yes, it's spooky, but yeah. I I will I'll I'll, I'll rarely ever say this. In the words of Mike Valenti, it's good when other teams want your coach. Yeah, it's true. That is the last time I will quote Mike Valenti. I apologize. So, yeah, it's interesting. Um, And the biggest one, the Arizona Cardinals have fired Cliff Kingsbury. Congratulations. It's about time. Congratulations. Somebody needed to go. Somebody needed to go. They also fired their GM too, right? Did they? I believe. Okay. I think. Well, don't quote me on it. They, it was like sixty Cliff, forty Kyler. Yeah. They both were major problems. Mm-hmm. But you just signed your quarterback to a big deal, so you got to try to figure it out. Right. Cliff had to go, and I think Kyler still has more potential than Cliff did. Yes. Um. Never had a winning season in college. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But now the Cardinals. And we'll talk about it more in the offseason. Apparently, DeAndre Hopkins is on the trade block. So, good luck, Kyler. Listen, they, they brought in Marquise Brown. They traded for, um, who was the receiver from the Panthers? <laughs> Robbie Anderson, yeah, and who he, played, like, no time yeah, at all. He wasn't really there. So, like you said, <laughs> mm-hmm. good luck. How, is Zach Ertz gone? Or, uh, he was hurt. He was on IR. But he I, might I, be back, but I mean, Trey I, McBride. I didn't know if they resigned, resigned him. Trey McBride looks pretty good. I was like, get Zach Ertz back on a winning team. He deserves to go back to winning. Yeah. Anyway, there's a little bit of a head coaching carousel. Supposedly, the Colts say that they might keep Jeff Saturday. That seems wild. Um, But anyway, <laughs> we'll get to that more later. Also, RIP J.J. Watt. He ain't dead. He just retired. Just his thank, career. Thank you for everything you've done, JJ. Yeah. You are you're one of the greats. He will be a Hall of Famer. For sure. Um, but the biggest news of the weekend. The Lions just missing the playoffs. The Rams and Baker Mayfield blew it. They had a chance. I would argue the refs kind of hurt them as well. Um, but that's besides the fact the Lions should have won more games. The Lions had a chance to get in the playoffs, they just missed it. But but that is that isn't actually the headline coming out of the weekend. No, because a crazy thing happened in Lambeau. Not only did the Lions get to play on Sunday night, not only did the Lions get to play on Sunday night against the division rival Green Bay Packers, not only did they get to play against the rival Packers on Sunday night at Lambeau Field, they got to beat the Packers at Lambeau Field. They got to beat them on Sunday night, and by beating them, they put them out of the playoffs, kicked them out, and they might have ended. Aaron Rodgers' the career. Rain. Boy, did he look sad. Yeah, he did. He, he was really happy and cocky last week. Mm-hmm. And he did not show up for the Pat Man, McAfee yeah. show yesterday because he's on vacation. Aaron's no. He's supposedly yeah. meeting with the Packers yesterday and today. Listen, Aaron has some <laughs> psychedelics to do and some thoughts to yeah. run through. And the Lions looked convincing. And I said it leading up to the week. ESPN was going to promote the Packers, the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, the Packers. Every every analyst picked the Packers. So many analysts and people <laughs> yeah. picked the Packers throughout the weekend, even on Sunday Night Football. The only people that picked the Lions, America, thank you. We're Tony Dungy picked them. We're America's team. The and great Tony, Tony Dungy. Dungy picked them. Um, why? I don't understand why there were so many analysts that were like, uh, it's Aaron Rodgers, come on, yeah. like. They like there was barely any real like analysis. Evidence. Yeah, he has not shown anything this yeah, season. Their reasoning was just the Packers and Aaron. Yep. Um and then Mike Greenberg did give the Lions some credit. And the one that I think gave a lot of credit to the Lions is Rex Ryan. Uh, so shout outs to those guys for picking the Lions. 
and man, the Lions were able to show on prime time what this team could be capable of next year. They showed they're creative. They're not afraid to do things. And their offensive line is going to beat people up. Um, and their defense can take advantage of people. Kirby Joseph should have picked off Aaron Rodgers more than once. Mm-hmm. It should have been two more picks. Um, so now <laughs> it's funny because Kirby Joseph in his rookie season has tied Brian Urlacher for the most ever uh, interceptions of Aaron Rodgers at three. That is hilarious. I love it. Yeah. That is. Nobody has ever picked off Aaron Rodgers more than that. So cool to see Listen. Aiden Hutchinson got another sack. Nine and a half sacks. He had two sacks. Two sacks in that game. Nine and yeah, a half you're right. sacks for the year. Three interceptions, mm-hmm. a stellar rookie year. One of a handful of players, not rookies, players to have those stats in a season. Yeah. Um, and James Houston, every defensive pick they made in this last draft. Basically has hit. Every single one. Mm-hmm. Is this the most positive end to a Lions season you think you've ever seen? Yeah, I think so. And to think on top of all that, they missed the playoffs. Yeah. That was like the most intriguing thing is they could have made the playoffs going into this game. Oh, not going in. Um, but going into the day, that that's what people were excited about. And at the end of the day, they lost their chance to make it into the playoffs, but people are still invested. And I think that's the the wildest part. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of hype going on in this team. They got some money to spend in the offseason. They got the number six overall pick. Don't they have two first round picks? Yeah. They yeah. also have um where did it end up? Eighteen or something. I don't know where the their actual pick is at. I can't remember exactly. Something eighteen or something like that. Um so they can do some things. Listen, Brad Holmes is basically proven at this point. Yeah. Get some home run hitters on defense with mm-hmm. those two picks. Yeah. Turn that defense into something to be feared. Yeah. Because, honestly, they started off horribly, but the way they switched it, they're not very far off. Yeah. Even with how young their players are. Yep. And they got they got some free agents. DJ Shark is in a free agent. Jamal Williams. Um, who else was it? Isaiah Bugs, I guess, is, is a Khalif free agent. Is Raymond coming back, or is he a free agent? Uh, I believe he's already coming back. Okay. Um, there's a couple other guys. I think Anzalone is a free agent. They honestly could let him walk. He's uh, yeah. he's tough, but man, he had a good season. But he has some solid highs and the lowest lows of many linebackers I've seen in the yeah, NFL. I, I agree <laughs> fully. Um, Rodrigo is basically the leader of the group, and just build on that. Yeah, to get the production that they have from fifth and sixth round picks is wild. This, Amon Ross, St. Brown, yeah, Malcolm Rodriguez, James Houston. That's pretty crazy. Um, and that bodes well for the future for, you know, believing that Brad Holmes can find guys in the draft, even if they don't have top picks. Yeah. Um, they know talent. Yeah. That, I think that is the most encouraging thing mm-hmm. to me with the lions in this past year. Yeah. They really understand and can identify talent now. Yep. And they, they fit it perfectly into their scheme. It's going to be exciting, and I can't wait for the offseason. Um, because now, and the way that Jared Goff finished the season. He's your guy. We don't have to worry about quarterback. Yeah. He's, again, he's not the elite of the elite, but he is a. You know what he can do? He can get you to a Super Bowl. He Yes, and he is a good system quarterback. He um, finished top five in like four different categories. Yeah. Yeah. He's efficient. He's, I mean, again, we talked about it before, like, he has chemistry with Amon on St. Brown, and I feel like I don't want to break that up with the new quarterback. Yeah. Um, and hopefully he can develop with Jamison Williams and get that going. He's, that he's shown be, flashes. That, was that touchdown called back? Yeah. In that, yeah, yeah that like was they, a hold. They made a connection. They're going to keep working on it in the offseason. Yeah. Yeah. Super exciting. Um, and now there's we're starting to get some national spotlight, and there's going to be some hype into this Lions team next year, especially because they they could win the division. Yeah. And that's a four real they, thing. They will probably be the predicted favorite. Yeah. I don't doubt it. They finished five and one in the division this year. Yeah. Which is cool. All righty. We only have five minutes. So we got to oh, okay. run through this because 
it's wild. playoff picks. Um, so yeah, <laughs> we'll just do preview. Yeah. We'll do uh, playoff picks for the NFL Super Wild Card Weekend or whatever they oh, call it. Oh boy, that's that's can, like what they call it. I'm not even. Can, can you do that one more time? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Super Wild Card. Weekend. Oh, you put bass in that one. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. We need to get a button. I'll get. That has your voice. I'll do a little that. bit of everything. Super Wild Card. Okay. Um. So we got games on Saturday, Sunday, and a game on Monday. So starting off on Saturday, we got the Seahawks playing the 49ers, a divisional matchup in the playoffs. You picking the Seahawks? Big confidence Brock will continue his reign. Yeah. I'll say it right that, now. That team is just too strong right now. Yeah. They're, they're so good. They're my Super Bowl favorite right now. I, I don't blame you. I they're, just, overall, they, they're running all similar. You know, a rookie quarterback has also never won the Super Bowl. So I did not realize that. I can't remember I if they've made it to a Super Bowl. I don't know. I think Dan Marino did in year two. Because I heard, or some, was it year one? I, I heard can't some stats or something about that kind of thing. So, yeah, if that's Dan, true, Dan Marino did it in his first two or three years. If that's true, that almost gives me more confidence that like some miracle could happen. Um, I'm going with San Francisco. Easy. Um, Chargers and Jaguars. I think this is the a more exciting game of the weekend, to be honest. Um, and it's at uh, Jacksonville. So the Chargers do have to travel. Can I pick first? Go for it. I trust Doug Peterson much more than Brandon Staley. That's kind of fair at this point, to be honest. Much more. And the shoe is always ready to drop with the Chargers Mm -hmm. somehow. I trust Justin Herbert. I trust Austin Eckler. That offense is explosive, and they got players on defense. But something always happens. Yeah. The Jags have made it to the AFC Championship before the Chargers have, or Mm – it, in in like the span of time, it's been a very long time since the Chargers made it that far. Yeah, I'm going with the Jags, and I'm going with the Chargers because I just have a feeling about this team that they could maybe surprise people. It is sad that this is Justin Herbert's first playoff appearance, along with Trevor Lawrence's first playoff. Blame experience. Staley and um, Urban. Yeah, blame them. Um, but I think I don't think Trevor Lawrence has been playing as good lately, um, and I think the Chargers could take advantage of that. Jaguars did blow them out early in the season, um, but I think Chargers could make a comeback for this one. Um, Sunday, we got the Dolphins at the Bills. Tua's not playing. Bills aren't losing. Go Bills. Um, DeMar Hamlin was released from the hospital. He is home. Incredible news. Yeah. There is a outside chance he could make it to that game. Which that, would be that would be in- The emotion in the stadium would be nuts. Yeah. So it'd be cool to see, yeah. but... Well, We'll see. Giants playing at Minnesota. I think this should be a actually pretty interesting game. Um, I'm a little nervous about the Vikings, but we know the Vikings could just turn it on at any point. Um, so I think I'll pick the Vikings for this one. Um, but I would not be surprised if the Giants somehow found a way. I trust Brian Dayball more as a first-year coach, even though the Vikings went. Was it was it thirteen and four? Uh, yep. Yeah. What Brian Dable did with that team was phenomenal. And I want to take them, but I'm going to take the Giants. I think they they just. I mean, I'm the Vikings. The Vikings. I'm going to take the Vikings. I think they're just too much in the end. Yeah. Um. Or big game. Big game. Kirk shows up and just ruins it all. Yeah. We'll see. Ravens and Bengals. Uh, should be should have been a more exciting matchup. We're not sure about Lamar Jackson in this one, so that's a big toss-up. If Lamar Jackson plays, I will make the bold statement that the Ravens win this game. If Lamar Jackson plays, I will not make the bold statement and say Cincinnati still wins. Yeah. Otherwise, I will say Cincinnati is going to win. Again, we're not going to take these picks as seriously as the yeah. regular season. Um, but I think the Ravens' defense could do something. Um, and the Bengals, they've lost Lyle Collins, and they lost Alex Kappa. Um, so they're without some key offensive linemen, but should be a good matchup. And then on Monday night, please, football people, let the Cowboys lose. Cowboys playing the Buccaneers. They got to go to Tampa. Um, should be a good game, I, I would hope. Both offenses are pretty good. Um, but I think the Buccaneers defense should be able to prevail in this one. Dak has thrown, what, like seven straight games with an interception or something crazy. He's just not been that good. Tom Brady seems like he's starting to get on track with uh, Godwin and Evans, so I would go with the Bucks. 
I'm not even thinking about it. That that regular season loss, I mean ending loss to the Commanders, mm-hmm. that just showed they're still the Cowboys. They they are who we thought they were. In the words of Denny Green, rest in peace. Let's go, Brady. Yeah. I hope it's a clutch win, too. I hope he <laughs> rips the hearts from the Cowboys again. Yeah. Let's let's do it, man. It would have been better if the Cowboys got another home game. That would have been funnier. On the road. Yeah. Anyway, those are the NFL playoff predictions. Um, we'll dive into the games more next week. Um, give more of our our previews. Um, who's your Super Bowl favorite? We'll make those picks right now. My Super Bowl favorite. I am going to stick with Buffalo. Okay. Not just because of what the emotional element is now, mm-hmm. but. I think they went through the ups and downs of the season. And coming off of that win against New England, I think they're really confident. I think they're ready. Yeah. After what the the opportunity they missed last year coming up just short, uh, I'm going to stick with Buffalo. Okay. I do have the 49ers, like I said, and I do think I would have them playing the Buffalo Bills. That would be such a good game. Yeah. Might Josh be heartbreaking. Allen versus Brock Purdy. Might be heartbreaking for the Man. Bills, but I, I don't know. There's something about the 49ers that I keep thinking could – they could go crazy. And they haven't even unlocked Debo Samuel with the Brock Purdy starting. So, yeah, I think they got even more room to grow. But, yeah, that has been Reviews from the Sidelines. We will catch you guys up on more college basketball, maybe some NBA, um, and we'll dive into the NFL playoffs next week. See you next time. The Lions are good again. How does it feel? It feels great. Let's go to a game next year. <laughs>